I love the way you go into the story mode and just give us everything because we need that. But, bro, you got to tell me this. Like, when you just close out a trade and you up 11 mil, you don't get nervous that, man, I hope they pay me. I hope they give me this. I'm not going to say who. Yeah, but yeah. I eventually, after that, I ended up getting that payout. It was it was, it was, was a rough time getting that payout, but it I did get it mm-hmm. within that you know, 48-hour range. Mm-hmm. And after that, something weird started happening to my account. I kept getting closed out of trades. I kept getting, you know, certain errors saying I couldn't put this much volume into the market or I couldn't put much this lot size or couldn't put that lot size. And it was emails at the email saying I couldn't do this, couldn't do that. And then eventually one day the owner of the brokerage ended up contacting me. And then they was like, yeah, bro, you got to like chill. Like, you got to stop doing all this crazy stuff because you're like, you're, you're messing up the business. And at this time I didn't know, cause I came from stocks, bro. Yeah. Like stocks, we have, there's legit brokers. Like mm-hmm. there's, I don't really think there's too many, there's probably is, but I don't think there's too many scammy brokers out there. So, you know, coming into Forex, I didn't know that's how the game works. That's how the game works, bro. So he contacted me and I was like, yeah, whatever, whatever this guy is talking about. <laughs> and two, three days after that, I couldn't log into the account. Like I couldn't log into the website. I couldn't log into the brokerage. I couldn't sign into my own account on MT5. And I was like, yo, bro, something's going on with my account. Never got a response. Mm. I seen that person at Forex Summit and mm. we talked about it. Well, he kind of dusted it off like he didn't know what was up. But I talked to him about it. I was like, yo, bro, like, what's up? Yeah. You know, I know it's like a year later, but what's up? Because yeah. I didn't go to the Forex Summit that year. I went this year. Mm-hmm. And I was like, yo, bro, like, what's up? You know, and then he was like, what do you mean? And I was like, you know what I'm talking about? And he just kind of like tried to push it off. And I was like, all right, so whatever. At, yeah. this, at this moment in my life, it's like, I don't even need it anyways. You know, I'm still climbing up, you know? Yeah. That's like... That's something right there where, you know, you work hard to get your your mindset to be able to handle those type of numbers or like to be disciplined enough to execute what you feel like what that intuition is telling you. Like you said, like just throughout your stock trading, your Forex trading, you talked about you felt that intuition like, yeah, man, I'm gonna just go for it. You know what I mean? And I think trading is a lot of that. Yes, it's the skill set, it's discipline, but you got to have that intuition. And that comes from the work. It's the same thing with even making money. People will be like, oh, what's your first 100K? Like, what's your first million? Like, bro, I was already making $10,000, $20,000. That was already crazy to me already. So once I got to that part, it was like, eh, I'm just keep going. Like, I'm going to just keep going. And it's the same way with what you're saying. You know, you just got to, you're going to continue to trade, 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 trade. And then you're going to know what you like. I suggest everybody, like, because people would come into the game, oh, I want to be a swing trader. Mm-hmm. They don't know nothing about trading. They just be like, I want to be a swing trader or I want to be a scalper. I see they make fast money. I feel like everybody should start off day trading, like day trade every single day because then you're going to start understanding, okay, I like doing this. I like this setup. I don't like this setup. I don't like trading this time. I don't like trading this pair. And then you're going to start the bill over time. Okay, I only like being in this trade for a couple minutes. I only like being in this type of trade for a couple minutes or a couple hours. And you're going to understand what you like to do. And that's the whole name of it to be honest because people will get you know on youtube and copy exactly what this guy's doing and it's not working yeah um obviously because we all have different minds and that's how the market moves in different minds there's different levels people getting in and out taking profits putting stop losses getting stop loss hit you know getting into trades Mm -hmm. like it's all people in the market like i look at it like that like as orders are being filled those are people putting emotional or rational or even logical decisions at one at one price point Mm -hmm. and you're determining is to okay what are the people thinking how are people thinking or how is everybody looking at the charts what is everybody thinking you know it's going to do how can i you know take advantage of that yeah like right now the the market is kind of the nasdaq market is selling off and everybody's probably thinking okay how can i capitalize off buys why are you thinking about buys? You need to capitalize off the winning team, it, you know? It's right there. <laughs> <laughs> it's right there. And, bro, I think, like, sometimes when you're growing on this journey, too, you try to, like, our natural instinct is what is everybody not thinking. Yeah. And so we trade based on what we think the market's going to do yeah. instead of looking, looking at what at it's doing yes. and saying, let me follow suit. Yes. You know what I mean? I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure if you start seeing... 
the market trend down and you hop into any kind of sale, I'm pretty sure it's going to end up continuing to trend down. Yeah. Or I wouldn't even say guaranteed or anything, but like I'm pretty sure 9, nine, nine out of 10, if you sell with the market, you're going to make money. If you buy with the market, you're going to make money. Make money yeah. But if you're trying to like, oh, when when am I going to catch the bottom of the sale? Like it's selling off and you're like, oh, when can I buy it back up? Or when can I catch it buy up? Because everybody, once again, thinks about those sniper entries or no drought on entries or entries where it can moon and you can never worry about it again. People want that. Yeah. But it's not that. Like sometimes, bro, you're going to have to get in and out of trades. Sometimes you're going to be in a trade for this long. Sometimes you might be in a trade for a long period of time before it even hits your target area. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? There's been trades where I've been holding it for like weeks. Mm. And I'm like, bro, this thing is like not moving. Mm. And turns out just wait a little bit longer and wait for that trade to pop. Boom. You're set. Yeah. And most people, most there. people, I think trading is really more of like a patience thing. People don't have patience. That's true. Cause I don't have patience and that's what I struggle with the most. Just waiting, playing the waiting game. Yeah. 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 I mean, it, it, it can be two sides now playing the waiting game and you know, you, you're like ready for your setup and there's a difference between like trading and you know, there's no setup, Yeah, you know, trading, true. trading yep. without patience, without a setup. Is destruction, but trading, you know, if you got a plan, but you're just impatient, you just really got to fix the impatient part. Yeah. But the people that be trading that just can't wait, yeah, just like I gotta just, get in there. They just be destroyed. The candlestick going like you on a 15 minute chart. Like this, how I used to be when I first started. Trading. Like my first month of trading, actually my first, yeah, yeah, like my first month, I was losing a lot of money, bro. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, bro, it was crazy. I actually did that. I'm too. on the 15 minute <laughs> chart, bro. Every time I see a candle move down, I'm selling. It move up, I'm buying, bro. You on a 15 minute chart, bro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I used to do. I used Just to trade losing on, money. I bro. used to trade on the one minute. Oh crazy, bro. It was crazy. Bro. I was trading the Nasdaq on the one minute time frame, bro. It was the craziest. Nine thirty. I'm talking about those candles was looking crazy, bro. Man, that's and crazy. You'll you'll start to learn as you you know get more into trading that everything is really on the higher time frame. Facts, bro. Every, bro, I made that shift this year. This uh, year I made that shift in the, the entries, bro. One hour golden, entries, bro. Yes. One hour entries, analysis and looking for my levels on the daily, and then confirming, you know, like trend lines and things like that on the four hour. But daily zones, one hour entries, bro. Yeah, it has been working for me, bro. Yeah, I do. I do mostly one hours. I, I do all my one hour is nice, bro. Because I'm more of a day trader that turns my trades into swing trades. Mm. So I'll be looking for a day trade. Most people look for a day trade on the 15. I look for it on a, the one hour time frame. And I'm trying to find, you know, swing high points and swing low points because those are where my entries come from. I yeah. I only sell when price is breaking swing lows and it has a reaction. And then I only buy when price has swing highs and it's breaking swing highs and it has a reaction. And with that, it's it's been times where I will wait two, three weeks before I catch a trade. But the trade that I catch Will set me good for the rest of the month. That's a you different know? mindset, you know. It, or because some people will be like, "Oh, you've already made money, so of course you don't trade for the whole month or so or whatever." That's not even the case. Because when I first started, remember, I didn't, I didn't, I wasn't trading like that. I was watching videos. I was practicing. I was learning more. And while I was doing that, I was waiting for a setup or waiting for my trade. I've been doing the same thing because the more you're in the market, the more you can lose. Like, that's all I think. Every time I'm in the market, I'm like, ah, I can lose it all. Mm. You know what I'm saying? I can possibly lose it all. Yeah. And I'm trying not to be in the markets like that because every time you get in, there's going to be just that one time. Yeah. That one time where you just like shouldn't be in the markets and you can lose it all.